any MLB futures that you're looking for? Yeah, uh, another Cy Young that I, I put in, and I'll, I'll just rehash this one because we talked about it like, probably two months ago at this point. George Kirby uh, at a long price is about eighty to one uh, on MGM, I think. And you know, you look at the Seattle Mariners; everyone looks at you know Luis Castillo and Logan Gilbert at the top of that rotation, and everyone you know is infatuated with those guys. And then obviously Robbie Ray, who already won a Cy Young award. But for me, George Kirby's the guy. As a rookie last year, he was awesome. He came up in about May, was just so so. You know, was pretty good. He was their number three prospect in their system when he came up. Came up, pitched really well. But then after the All Star break, he hit in second gear. In his last 10, uh, 15 starts, he had a sub two ERA. He was striking guys out. He was one of the staples for the Mariners that allowed them to really make that push into the postseason and kind of challenge the Astros as well. And I realized the price, you know, it was 80 to one for a reason. He's a second year pitcher. He's a young guy and he didn't really strike out a lot of guys or really go deep into games last year as a rookie, of course. Uh, for me, when I look at it and when I look at the matchups that are going to come, especially now with being able to play every team, you know, he gets to play the Pirates and the Reds and the Nationals and it doesn't have to play just the AL West gets less games against the Rangers and the Astros. I think that's really valuable. And, you know, as a guy who he still probably won't strike out a ton of guys, I think he will see a tick up in his strikeouts. But a guy that relies mostly on the defense behind him, they traded for Colton Wong behind him, which is a gold glove second baseman. They added Teoscar Hernandez in the outfield to upgrade over Jesse Winker because Jesse Winker was atrocious defensively. Not that Teoscar Hernandez is like, you know, a platinum glover, but he's at least closer to average. And Jesse Winker was at the bottom of the garbage can as far as defensive metrics go. So, Kirby, for me, I think you're going to see an uptick in innings. You know, you usually see in that jump from first to second year that, you know, as he gets stronger and gets acclimated to a starter's workload, they'll let him go deeper. And so I'll see more six, seven, eight inning starts come this year as opposed to, all right, he's at 90 pitches in the fifth inning. We got to yank him. Um, so I really like that price for George Kirby. I think he'll be right up there. I think this price is going to drop. So I like him going forward. I think he might be the ace, uh, you know, come June or July, come the All-Star break. So, Jake, I'm looking at a prop for Rookie of the Year. Now, Rookie of the Year can be tough sure. to tell because – I'm a believer that the rookie of the year usually had some at-bats the year before, just not enough to qualify for this year. Tristan Cass is at 9-1. to one. The reason why I'm looking at him is because there are virtually no other bats in that Red Sox lineup behind uh, Raphael Devers. So sure. you, you almost wonder, well, Cass is who's slated to be in the seventh spot but could potentially move up. Trevor Story's not there. So they're going to need another bat. That's Someone's going to see pitches down that line. Am I crazy to look at Tristan Cass's at nine to one as potential rookie of the year, even though his team, because the rookie of the year usually tends to not be on a winning team. So right. could this be a situation where here's a team that's well known, they're around 500, and he might be the second, maybe third best producing bat in that Red Sox lineup uh, for the season? Yeah, I I love Tristan Casas. I thought he played really well when he came up last year. He was everything that the Red Sox were hoping for. A guy with a lot of power, a guy with a lot of potential. I thought he hit really well. He's also kind of a weirdo, which is great. He goes and meditates and sunbathes in the outfield with his shirt off before games. It's hilarious. I love it. I think he's great. Um, I think come you know May end of April, I think Cassis is going to be in that three or four spot behind Devers in that lineup. Mm -hmm. Seven is way too low for him. I think he's great. Nine to one. I, I totally get it. KJ, I thought about that myself. I looked at it. You know, I thought nine to one wasn't exactly a price that I wanted to jump in because I think I'll wait you know, there's going to be somebody who pops right away to start the year, and then Castles will be one of those guys that falls a little bit. But I love him. I think he could be a guy that contends. Uh, my only thing with both Rookie of the Year awards this year is that Corbin Carroll and Gunnar Henderson might just win the thing wire to wire. They're both incredible. They're both really good. Uh, but if someone were to jump up, I think Cass is one of those guys because otherwise the AL Rookie of the Year field is kind of weak to me. You know, in the NL, you have a couple pitchers like, and Bill's going to love this, Painter for the Phillies, the 19-year-old who everybody loves, who I love. I think he's going to be great. You know, guys like that who can just pop in the NL. In the AL, you don't really have guys like that. Cassis, I think, at the very worst, he could finish second uh, if, if Henderson wins. I like Cassis a lot. Might be one of the few good news uh, pieces that you'll see from the yeah. Red Sox this year, other than that Red Sox are red.